Good afternoon and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Being the last Sunday of the month, today is the April walk around. Here in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, April was an exceptionally dry month. And with so many days of sunshine, temperatures inside the greenhouse were in the mid to upper 70s, even into the 80s, with very low humidity. My property is ringed with tall evergreen trees that I wanted to keep, even though they do have some negative impacts on the greenhouse, such as shade or dropping pine cones sound like loud crashes in the middle of the night. But the worst impact over the two years I've lived here so far has been the heavy tree pollen this year. A thick coating of this yellowish orange pollen is covering everything. I've swept and brushed away as much as I can, but have to wait for more rain to fill the rainwater tanks before I feel comfortable using the pressure washer to wash the pollen off of the greenhouse roof. The big effort this month, though, has been transplanting the seedlings that I started in March and direct sowing a bunch of vegetables, flowers, and herbs. So if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe so YouTube will show it to more viewers. Or for the price of a cup of coffee, join my Patreon page and come along today to see what's growing in the greenhouse. Since it was so dry this month and I need wood chips for the greenhouse, I worked away chipping this pile and under these shrubs. Himalayan blackberries are extremely invasive, so I am also cutting them back before they start growing for this season. Finished emptying the load of dirt from the truck but didn't get to hauling the mulch as I'd hoped. There was supposed to be a carport here that met up to the steps and ramped down to the greenhouse level. But by the time the house was done, I had construction fatigue and decided to put that off to a later year. Time to check in with Matt, whether that'll be later this year. The deer like to lay in the grass on the drain field and there will be fawns soon, so I'm not going to cut it for the foreseeable future. No sign yet of wildflower sprouting from the seeds I tossed out last month. The trailer roof shows how bad the tree pollen has been. I pressure washed this white last fall. No growth at all on this columbine. Later you'll see the comparison to columbine inside the greenhouse. I did, however, give this area its first cut of the season. I'm not sure, but think these are Shasta daisies? Let me know in the comments if you know what this is. The deck shows how bad the pollen is this year. The deer continue to trim this hydrangea. Time to put a larger cage around it. This ajuga looks well, and the deer don't eat it, but later you'll see the comparison to ajuga taken from this patch now inside the greenhouse. I spent several evenings after work cleaning the south gutter. It's eight inches wide by 60 feet long and was totally filled with fermented tree pollen and needles. Up close, the smell was horrendous, like rancid urine. Glad I got that done before this latest rain. Washed the bird poop off the wall, but we'll need to touch up this paint. The spikes do seem to be working so far. 
to keep them from landing here anymore. Trillium grow wild on this end of my property and bloom for a few weeks in April. Look what photo popped up on my memories of this day from two years ago. Also worked at chipping this pile. I found it interesting the north gutter was just as full of debris, but it was dry, so not rancid, and took only about half the time to clean. Typical view of the food garden this month. Mess from multiple projects in progress. I'll be so happy to tidy up when the Gabby on basket ladder and the rock piles go back into the pond. This volunteer sunflower is ahead of the seeds. Only one seed has sprouted so far. I'm trying parsley in a few areas, but none have sprouted yet. This Kalamondan is a trooper coming back from a freeze last winter. Draining the dehumidifier here gives the peach tree near constant drip irrigation, except when it was catching up from sideways rain coming in the ridge vents the other day it was a little too forceful. The peach is covered with peaches. This is only its second year, and it put out three perfect peaches last year. Looks like there will be more this year. This time last month, the water was only about eight inches deep, and I decided to take off the ladder and put a single layer of rubber over the entire corner before filling anymore. I've been refilling in about two inch increments to then wait and check for leaks. When the tanks were down to about a thousand gallons, I waited for more rain. So I'm crossing my fingers the rain continues for about 10,000 gallons more and no leaks. It was hot enough that I hung the first shade curtain but need to put up the curtain rod for the other before I can hang the second curtain. The perimeter beds is where the most action has been this month. Berries are starting to form on the strawberries. This is a sucker from the peach tree. Since it came off the rootstock, it may not be anything useful, but I'm going to let it grow for a season and see what happens. This year I'm trying several companion planting combinations, like determinant plum and slicing tomatoes with Genovese and Thai basil in this location. Three kinds of cucumbers along the wall. These asparagus are ready to go into larger pots that I can move around until I find the right place for them. Volunteer potato in the bok choy and dill bed. radish, lavage, and potato. Not too hot today, so air is barely moving through the air-to-ground heat exchange tubes under the food garden. More radish and kohlrabi. Changed my plan for the irrigation in this bed, so had to wait for additional fittings to arrive. Direct sowed two leaf lettuce, baby beets, and lemon balm. Leeks and bunching onions are the last to be transplanted. No parsley sprouts here either. More Thai basil, sunflowers, and Genovese basil, and a cherry tomato that will get more sun in this spot than just four feet away.
good germination on the fennel that can grow up between the olive branches this year, which already has one full set of leaves since I transplanted it. There are so many volunteer spinach plants spread around and they grow so fast that I've been able to harvest enough for a wilted spinach salad the other day. Chipped enough branches to fill about three gorilla carts to continue filling the paths between the beds. Provider beans just sprouted. Transplanted these watermelon a couple days ago. Had success with purple queen beans last year, so trying again this year. Bees started in pots are happily climbing while the direct sown are just barely breaking ground. Especially when it's raining, I really love having the potting bench area inside the greenhouse. Even though it's still messier than I like, there's room for the supplies I need at hand each season. This month, the seed flats and pond patching materials moved out to make way for irrigation parts fertilizers, tools, and parts for projects underway. Slowly but surely deciding on the organization of drawers versus shelves versus hooks before making them more permanent. Lots of planting and ornamental and herb sections. It's been too hot for the primroses that were here, so I've moved them to a shadier area in the sitting area. Still don't know what this is. If you know, please leave it in the comments down below. I love these pansies I bought at the local nursery whose sign made me stop. I'm glad they're putting on another bloom. Buds starting on the cosmos and dianthus. Transplanted godesia. Columbine have really come on over the month. These are from the same seeds started at the same time as those outside by the ramp. A viewer helped identify this as ivy leaves toad flax. It's doing what I hoped it would do, which is to thrive until the ponds are ready to landscape around and I can move it there. This Raleigh's favorite seems to be the frog's favorite to hide in. Started seed flats are white sage, Codesia, coneflower, another volunteer potato, carnations, calendula, nasturtiums, and some more volunteers. I'm not sure what they are yet. The violets, Raleigh's favorite, and ajuga wintered over now, filled in with flowers, started from seed. This bed is divided into eight almost one foot square with nasturtiums, rosemary and coneflowers, borage and zinnias, catnip and lavender, and orange thyme. This fern is native to this spot. It survived the construction. Everything in this section survived the winter. This ring is more basil, calendula, lemon balm, white sage, oregano, volunteer spinach, and I think this is kale.
this is the east side that is mostly shady, so I hope the primroses like it better here. More oregano and violets. The furniture continued to migrate around, trying different arrangements when sitting by myself or with guests. About time to clear out the mess in this corner too. After getting hammered by powdery mildew and insects last year, there's finally enough mint I can pick some. Not much change at the East Palm this month, although it may soon be time to connect the black perf pipe and bring in the material for the pond plants to grow in. Switched back to the summer curtains and bought another pair to make curtains for the other window. I learned last summer that with the doors open so much, I should cover the love seat from dust. Time to return the ice maker to the counter. Soon the orchid will be able to return. I'm really looking forward to a view out to a pond with water and plants in it. Nothing new inside, except the view. Even though the overnight temperatures are still in the 40s, without having to worry about wind or rain and an extra blanket, I've started leaving the door open overnight. I've lived here full time for 18 months across two winters, springs and summers without any sign of mold in the house, and I haven't died yet from toxic mold exposure, so I think that answers some of the comments. And it's time to stop the Mold Watch segment. And there you have it. Raining and cold outside, while well, I'm comfortable in the rocking chair. And even though I see so many things that still need doing, I'm also appreciating the abundance around me and so grateful I get to live in a greenhouse. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And come back next time to see if third time's the charm to fill the pool and ponds.